Label Radio. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Mellow One, White Label Radio, classic hip hop, and we are in the building with the great Fife Dog from a tribe called Quest. What up, Fife? Chilling, baby. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good, man. It's, it's a pleasure to sit down with you. No doubt. I'm one of your biggest fans. I mean, like when I thank you when I when I uh-huh. talk about groups. Mm-hmm. Your group is in the top, you know, five, okay. and you're in the top ten of one of my MCs or whatever. Like oh, you, I, you, I think you made the group for me. Thank you. You Appreciate know, that. how does it feel when you hear that type of that type of talk with the group that you guys had being in the top three, top five? How does that feel for you? It, it's crazy. I didn't know it was going to be this big or ever get this big. We just wanted to be, well, me personally, I just wanted to be a celeb in my hood at least be able to come back, give back to the community, things of that nature. But I didn't think it was going to be, you know, everybody in L.A. to Tokyo, knowing our words by heart, things of that nature. So it's been crazy. It's been a fun ride, though. That's dope. That's dope. And when you guys were in, what was it like being in the studio when you guys were, when you start to craft this? As it started to go, did you think, Mm -hmm. yo, we got something? Or were you still like, this is just fun? It was always fun. Mm -hmm. But... It wasn't until going on the road for the first album campaign, for the campaign and the first album that I realized, like, yo, this could be crazy. You know what I mean? So once we started working on Low End Theory, I knew he was definitely on to something. Okay, okay. You know I mean? So, yeah. And the first album you guys did, uh, the El Segundo song, have you ever been to El Segundo? No. <laughs> Never been to El Segundo? It's crazy because being from L.A., right. I, was, I lived in Inglewood, home of the Los Angeles Lakers, of course, right. but El Segundo's right there. And yeah. when you guys came out with a song, El Segundo, El Segundo never really messed with us. Uh-huh. We Every yeah. time we went out to El Segundo to do something, they would pull us over yeah. and whatever. So when you came out with something, I'm like, why are they talking about El Segundo? Well, that, that idea, because you know I'm not on that particular record, but yeah. Q-Tip is a big Sanford and Son fanatic. Exactly, exactly. So, and I am as well. Yeah. And, you know, Fred Sanford, even though he pretty much came from St. Louis, Show wise, yeah, and I think he's from Red Fox, is from St. Louis in real life, I believe. Okay, but he always added St. Louis somewhere in the show, he wrote it into the script, whatever. But, um, yeah, obviously moved to LA or El Segundo, or whatever, so he always brought that up. That was one of his, that was one of the funny parts, funnier parts, yeah, in Sanford and Son. So Q Tip caught on to that and he just made it part of that record. You yeah, I mean? it's crazy because when San Francisco was around, my mom is she grew up in L.A. Whatever, yeah. people can go west. Now everybody's in Inglewood mm-hmm. and those places or whatever. You couldn't go mm-hmm. west, so that's why San Francisco would always be like, "Yo, I want to go El Segundo mm-hmm. because it was kind of like going to Beverly Hills." Yeah, you know. Yeah, no doubt, so it, no it, it's funny. It's funny. So, what is your favorite Tribe Called Quest album? Album. Um, it's a toss up between Low End and Midnight, but I'd have to say Low End. Just a notch above midnight because that was me personally. That was my coming out party. Cause you know, with the first album, it was like, well, what does he do? Yeah. And I never really wanted it to be, well, what does he do? You know, how Jerobi and I was supposed to do our own group originally, mm-hmm. but he ended up deciding to go to culinary school for culinary arts. So I ended up joining Tribe full time. You know what I mean? But um, definitely low end because it answered those questions. You know, what does he do? Okay, yeah, whole lot. That's what I do. And it's it's funny because on low end you can tell like you was aggressive. So did you have that in the mindset when you was on low end theory that you have like I'm going to show them what I do by going hard on these tracks? Not only that, that's I came from the battle era. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Coming up in the streets of Queens and whatever. You had to be ready at all times. Like you could be coming out your house getting ready to go to school and they run up on you, look, yo, let's get it. And you had to be ready. So I came from that whole battle ever, so that's where my aggressiveness came from. Okay. Now, Q tip pretty much Q tip and Chris Lighty, rest in peace. Um, Mike G in Africa from the Jungle Brothers as well as my boys from Dayla, they pretty much taught me song structure structure, how to write songs. You know, the whole 8-bar hook, 16-bar hook, that type of thing. Because you leave it up to me, my dumb self would have been trying to battle for a whole album. <laughs> that's 
that's all I knew, you know what I mean? But those guys definitely took me under their wings and, you know, helped me out. That's him specifically because, you know, he got his education from Red Alert and the Jungle Brothers. So by the time Tribe got the deal, he was like, yo, this is how we going to do it. This is how it has to be done. So nowadays, I don't even battle. I just write songs. Not saying I don't know how to battle, but it's about that money. So you got it in you still? Yeah, to a certain extent. But the thing is, we're in the business of selling records. Yeah. Anything less than that is uncivilized. So Especially if you have a family at home that you have to answer to. Yeah. So battling is not even in my, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not paying nothing. So what about the new thing that Eminem's doing with Total Slaughter where he bringing like known artists battling some of those battle rappers? If he if they came to you and say, Fife Dog, I want you to battle, say, a load of Lux for, you know, X amount of dollars, mm. would you do it? I doubt it. Okay. I doubt it. Okay. That's so far going for me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I wanted to battle, and when I was still into it, nobody wanted to do it no more. <laughs> now, all of a sudden, I mean, because this is, what, 25 years now we've been yes. doing this? Yes. What am I battling for, really? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. You don't need that credibility, right? <laughs> for real. Yeah. Like, I, I'm not sweating it like that. That's dope. So, during the time, the whole native tongues thing, De La, Jungle, Queen Latifah, all that, what was it like? in that environment man we we were just a bunch of kids who enjoyed being around each other at each other's sessions two days in a row without going home things of that nature it was just a fun time for us and we were learning from each other you know what i mean not only that it was very competitive as much as we loved each other it was like yo that wreck is hot now we gotta go in the studio at our own session and smash that you know what i mean but um the only thing that i regret as far as native tongues was we had an opportunity to really make it big and we didn't really capture it when it was there for us so it was like by the time rizza and wu-tang came about they knew exactly what they were doing so they, they we should have been doing what they ended up doing you know what i mean but yeah like I said, back then, we were kids just having fun. That's you know dope. what I mean? But we, Chris Slidey made us catch him real quick. Like, yo, y'all can't be wasting this money. Y'all got to get it while it's hot. Exactly. You know what I mean? So, thank goodness we were able to get it during the golden era. But as far as the whole Native Tongue Collective, it should have been a little more major than it was. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I agree 100%. Yeah. So, let's talk about, I hear these stories about, tribe get into a fight with Rex in effect. What mm -hmm. happened? And why? Um, what happened was let's see, I don't know how I should have said I haven't spoken about this in so long. I know. <laughs> but before Tribe got the actual deal, I used to there's this guy named Mr. Walt from the Beat Miners, Evil D, Mr. Walt. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Walt used to work at this record store. He's from Brooklyn. I used to work at a record store in my neighborhood in Queens. So it's almost like the Vapors, Cool V, the verse about Cool V. Yeah, yeah. He wanted the job at the record shop, offered him a job, and now he don't want it. Damn, it feels good to see people. That whole verse was basically my story. Because I wanted to work at that record shop so bad. So I used to go there every day after school and look at the credits on different records. And at the time, Teddy Riley had like, the New Jack Swing in full swing. Keith Sweat's album, Al B. Shore's album, whoever else he was doing back then, Deja, um, a bunch of groups. And then you heard other songs that had that feel. But then I'm, I'm so much into credits to this day, I used to go in the store and look on the back of the albums. Who produced this particular record? Boom, boom, boom. And some of those records didn't say Teddy Riley. It was somebody biting his whole style. So by the time Tribe Called Quest came about, well, we got the jazz on that second album. Mm -hmm. I said, me sweat another. I do my own thing. Strictly hardcore tracks, not a, a new, new jazz, jazz swing. swing. Yes. And that came from looking at the credits and seeing people biting. So Rex and Effects thought I was dissing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Whereas I was actually... Maybe we thought, I we thought she was dissing. <laughs> right. Maybe I should have said it differently. Yeah. 
But what I was saying in essence is, yo, there could only be one Teddy Riley. Let that man live. It could only be one Red Man. It could only be one Busted. It could only be one DMX. Let that man live. And the one thing, when I was coming up in the game in that same battle era I was telling you about, biting was forbidden. Back then, you get punched in your face for that. So that's basically what I was saying when I said that line. They took it as I was dissing, whatever, whatever. So there was a show at Radio City Music Hall. It was Run DMC. Naughty, and I believe SWV was on that bill. So me, Tip, and a couple people from our hood go to the show, met up with Lighty, a couple of our, of our peoples, and we ran in the Rex and Effects. And Heavy D, who was cool with us, as well as Teddy Riley, of course, because, you know, Teddy did a bunch of joints for Hev. Rest in peace. And he tried to squash the beef. So... Beef was somewhat squashed between the actual two groups. But you know when you got your boys with you, that's something totally different. Yeah. So we got our crew. They got our they crew. So they crew is still kind of ice grilling like what? Boom. So I'm like, what? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm not going back down. You know, it's whatever. So we ended up squashing it. But then you know. When you have beef, or if you squash beef, you don't really go nowhere by yourself. Not, not in that same vicinity, at least. You know what I'm saying? Or venue, or whatever. Neighborhood, whatever. Mm -hmm. Q-Tip leaves us inside. We're watching Naughty or somebody. And he walks outside. Rex and Effects crew had a beef with Prince Poe from Organized Confusion. Wow. They run up on him, hemming him up for whatever reason. And Q-Tip, you know, Prince Poe and Pharaoh, they from our hood in Queens. So, you know, off top, Q-Tip's going to try and hold him down. Q-Tip jumped in it. He got hit. They tore his retina or whatever. And they tried to they tried to say, you know, the media tried to say, oh, yeah, tribe Q-Tip got jumped or whatever, whatever. But it was really because Prince Poe got jumped. He was just going to help. You know what I'm saying? So we go outside now because Q-Tip ain't come back in to watch the show for a minute now. So we like, yo, where this nigga at? So we go out there. Oh, shit. Oh. You know what I'm saying? So we ended up taking him to the hospital. But that was a whole beef of Rex and effects. And then we had to get Farrakhan. And they should, not Farrakhan, but Minister Conrad Muhammad and the Nation of Islam to hold squashed the whole thing. It was getting ugly. Real ugly. Wow. I ended up squashing it, so he squashed it. And then, you know, Rex and Tribe was cool after that. You know what I'm saying? But, you know everybody gonna put... Yeah, people put extras on top of it. That's why I want to ask you since I was here, like, yeah, what happened? Because That's basically what happened. It stemmed from what I said on that record. But then they had a problem with me. And we was beefing back and forth, words were exchanged, this, that, the other. Because there was a spot in New Jersey, T-Neck, New Jersey, called The Rink. Every Tuesday night, everybody be up at The Rink. So I used to see them dudes up at The Rink, and, you know, we'd be ice grilling, you know, across to whatever. And then we finally, things finally came to a head. Unfortunately, Tip tried to squash one thing, which led back into what we had just squashed, yeah, and that's what happened. So that's crazy. So, so of course, I have to take the blame for it. Yeah, of course, it's, it's your always. fault, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Always. It's always your fault, huh? It's always my fault. <laughs> always. Bro. But I'm glad you told the story because I've heard yeah. different versions, and everybody talks about yeah. you guys brawling or whatever. But I'm glad you actually told the story yeah. firsthand instead of yeah. third or fourth. It wasn't hand. even really a brawl. We was trying to, well, Tip was trying to help our boy out from the hood. Yeah. And unfortunately. They attached it to what we were already beefing about. Yeah.